Hello, my name is Alexey Konasevich. Today we talk about fintech and blockchain regulations in Australia. The Australian Senate Select Committee on uh, Financial Technology and Regulatory uh, Technology, let's call it just fintech committee, issued three reports in September 2020, in April 2021, and final report in October 2021. So today we are discussing the final report. The committee has already made a range of recommendations in a variety of areas across its first two interim reports. The committee decided that for this phase of the inquiry, it would focus on several issues that had been identified to the committee as key areas uh, affecting the competitiveness of Australia's technology, finance and digital asset industries, namely the regulation of cryptocurrencies and digital assets, issues uh, relating to debanking of Australian fintechs and other companies, the policy environment for neobanks, in Australia and options to replace the offshore banking unit. The scale and speed with which cryptocurrencies and other digital assets have progressed in the recent years has surprised governments, regulators and policymakers. With a global market now totaling in the trillion of dollars, the tremendous potential of blockchain technology and decentralized finance is becoming recognized by mainstream institutions and investors. Recent survey data shows that 25% of Australians either currently or have previously held cryptocurrencies, making Australia one of the biggest adopters of cryptocurrency of cryptocurrencies on per capita basis. While other jurisdictions have moved forward in attempting to create regulatory frameworks and give market participants certainty and provide consumer protections, Australia has not yet introduced fit-for-purpose regulatory systems for these emerging technology sectors. This is creating uncertainty for project developers, businesses, investors and consumers. Two prominent Australian-founded uh, digital currency uh, exchanges have recently gained regulatory licenses in, in Singapore and the UK, respectively, showing that Australia is missing out on by not developing appropriate framework here. Uh, chapter 2 of this report outlines the current regulation of this sector in Australia and overseas, while Chapter 3 set forth the many proposal put forward by submitters and witnesses on how digital assets could be properly regulated in Australia in order to promote innovation and attract investment while providing appropriate safeguards for investors and consumers. The committee has put forward a series of uh, eight recommendations to address these issues. Uh, firstly, it is clear that the current regulation of digital currency exchanges on DCEs, uh, which is generally limited only to uh, registration with Austrac, Austrac is an agency that monitors money laundering, is inadequate for businesses that in some cases are dealing with uh, asset volumes in the billions of dollars and properly designed market license for this sector will assist the sector to mature and create confidence. Uh, secondly, what senators uh, conclude is that an appropriate regime for custodial and depository services for digital assets is required. Custody arrangements for digital assets uh, present some unique risks that are not analogies for traditional assets, which must be carefully thought through in the development of appropriate requirements. Given the scale of Australia's existing industry for custody of traditional assets, there is significant scope for Australia to benefit from becoming a leader in 
the digital assets space. Thirdly, a token mapping exercise is required to classify the various types of crypto asset tokens and other digital assets being developed in the market to ensure that the regulatory classifications for these assets are fit for purpose. This exercise should take account of the various approaches to classifying digital assets that have occurred in other jurisdictions in recent years. A new decentralized autonomous organization legal structure is needed to ensure that emerging types of blockchain-based organizations can be established with clarity as to how they can operate in Australia. This approach has already been trialed in other jurisdictions and in practical effect will operate similar to a limited uh, liability company. A review of the anti-money laundering counter-terrorism financing regulations is required to ensure that these regulations are fit for purpose and do not undermine innovation. In particular, issues around the implementation of the Financial Action Task Force travel rule have been raised with the committee as requiring attention. Taxation rules for digital assets require further classification, clarification, in particular the rules around capital gains tax for uh, cryptocurrency and digital assets need to be updated to ensure that new types of technology structures are appropriately accounted for and digital asset transactions only create a capital gains tax events when they genuinely result in a clearly definable capital gain or loss. The opportunities associated with digital asset infrastructure were highlighted in evidence to the committee as well as the energy intensity of cryptocurrency mining practices. The committee is recommending a tax concession for uh, digital asset miners operating in Australia who source their own renewable energy. Finally, the committee heard about both the opportunities and risks associated with central bank digital currencies. The committee considers that Treasury should conduct a policy review on the potential for a retail CBDC in Australia to ensure these issues are continuing to be appropriately explored in Australian context. Debanking. The issue of debanking is discussed in Chapter 4 of this report. Debanking means a bank cuts access to banking services. The committee heard extremely concerning accounts uh, from individuals and businesses that have experienced debanking in Australia, particularly in uh, remittance payments and the digital asset sectors. The committee recognizes that debanking is a complex problem occurring uh, for a number of reasons, including underdeveloped regulatory arrangements, particularly in the digital asset space, and the severe penalties associated with banks breaching their AML CTF obligations. It's also clear that banks are often debanking clients in these sectors without ad adequate consideration and without clear reasons. In addition, anti-competitive reasons for debanking were also suggested to the committee. More must be done to ensure that the guidelines around debanking are clear and there are avenues of uh, recourse for those who have been treated unfairly. Work with uh, the ACCC, Australian Competition Consumer Commission, in uh, 2019 recommended that the government establish a working group to consult on the development of a scheme through which the due diligence requirements of the banks can be addressed. The Council of Financial Regulators has now established this working group. The committee has recommended that this work to establish a due diligence scheme 
should be finalized and implemented by June 2022. The committee is also recommending that in order to increase certainty and transparency around debanking, the Australian government should develop a clear process for businesses that have been debanked. This scheme should involve businesses that have been debanked being able to have recourse uh, to a complaints process uh, through the Australian Financial uh, Complaints Authority to ensure that procedural fairness and natural justice are afforded. The committee also heard that providing more direct access to businesses to payment, uh, payments rails rather than having to rely on the major banks can help address issues around debanking. Noting that the recent apparel payments review recommended that the Reserve Bank of Australia should develop common access requirements for payment systems. Uh, the committee has recommended that Reserve Bank of Australia should develop common access requirements for the new payments platform in order to uh, reduce the reliance of payments businesses on the major banks for the provision of banking services. The committee also considers several other issues in Chapter 5 of the report before setting out its full conclusions in Chapter 6. In particular, the committee has considered evidence on options to replace the offshore banking unit and is recommending that the global market's incentive suggested by submitters should be implemented to replace the offshore banking unit regime by the end of 2022. Conclusion. Australia has significant potential to keep advancing as a technology and financial center if we grasp the opportunity to update our regulatory frameworks, uh, drive innovation and enhance our competitiveness. The committee commands this report and the recommendations in it to government and the industry to drive this agenda forward. That's it for today. Next time we are going to unpack and discuss these recommendations. Stay tuned, hit like and subscribe. evidence to the committee as well as the um, energy intensity. Oh, la, 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 la.